Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. morning. I'd like you to turn to Romans chapter 4. Good morning, good morning. Romans chapter 4. We're going to get right at it. It's good to see everyone here this morning. It's encouraging, not just to me, but to everyone else when we see you. And if you're not encouraged to see someone else, please meet me after service so we can have a conversation. Romans 4. Now, we've been dealing with, and I want to, as I said, I want to get right at it. We've been dealing with uh, this mini-series, Death to Sin. And so I decided to go to places as I uh, deal with this. And we saw that, and we'll continue to see what it takes to keep the new covenant. Uh, it's not the old covenant, and some, sometimes we confuse the old with the new. And so we study that it's possible to keep the new covenant, uh, there are times people go to the scriptures and they're talking about the scriptures, those passages are talking about the old covenant. So I want to deal with a few things that people normally would go to. And we dealt Romans chapter 7 last week. So now we want to go to Romans chapter 4. And I want to want you to think about this. And uh, this is where most people go. Now the intention is not is to help us to understand the scriptures. I don't want anyone to misunderstand what we're doing. It's to help us to understand what God requires, which means salvation. And that's the point here. That is our intention to help. And so I want you to look at these scriptures. And what some of us are familiar with these scriptures in verse 1 of chapter 4. Let's get right to Abraham. Now you'll see what happens here in Genesis chapter 15. But uh, Paul is taking what happens in Genesis chapter 15, and he's making a point here. Now, we'll, watch how we deal with this. And when then shall we say that Abraham, our father, according to the flesh, uh, has found? If Abraham was justified by works, notice that. He has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. And it was credit to him for righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as a favor, that's grace, but it was, uh, but, but as what is due. But the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. And so I, I looked at that and I want to deal with this because sometimes uh, people look at this scripture and say, we don't have to do anything. So when we talk about how to be saved, they'll say, well, that is a work. And so let the scripture deal with what is going on here. And so notice it says, for if Abraham was justified by works, he has, he has something to boast about, but not before God. And so what works is he talking about here? What is he talking about? Because we go to James chapter 2, is going to say Abraham was justified by works. And so we'll get there. But let's look at the context. Now, uh, let's go to uh, chapter 2 and verse uh, 26. Chapter 2 and verse 26. And I, I want you to turn there if you'd like. And so those who are listening on uh, social media. I, I'd like you to turn there because we want to understand this. And so Paul says in verse 26 of chapter 2, so if the uncircumcised man keeps the requirements of the law, uh, will not his circumcision be regarded as circumcision? And he, was, he who is physically uncircumcised, if he keeps the law, will he not judge you who through having the letter of the law and circumcision are a transgression of the law. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. 
But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that which is of the heart, but the flat, but by the spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not from men, but from God. Now, so notice here it's an issue of circumcision. And what happened that the Jews, because that law of circumcision was given to them, in their mind, in order to be saved, you had to be circumcised. That's a fleshly thing. And so we get to Galatians, you see that the, the Galatians, they were, the Christians, or Jewish Christians, when they were trying to teach uh, the Gentile Christians that it's in Acts chapter 15 also, that uh, you have to be baptized for the remission of sins, of course, etc. But you also have to be circumcised. And so that's a work they're saying that you have to do to be saved. And so Paul, right here, we get into this circumcision. And, and, and so notice he says again in chapter 4, verse 1, Our father, what then shall we say that Abraham, our father, uh, according to flesh, has found? Then he says, for if Abraham was justified by works, notice that. He has something to boast, but not before God. But what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as favor, but what is due. I know I repeated myself because I want you to get it. But the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credit, credited as righteousness. But notice, but the one who does not work. Now, I'm going to show you something else. So that entails the work that the Jews thought they had to do to be saved, that you had to be circumcised. That's a work that they thought you'd be justified that way, and, and they hated to give it up. And, and so notice, notice chapter uh, 4 and verse 9. We're in chapter 4. Look at verse 9. Here we go again. He says, chapter 4, ver chapter four and verse 9. Is this blessing then on the circumcised or on the uncircumcised also? For we say faith is credited to Abraham as righteousness. Now then, was it credit while he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Well, not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received a sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while uncircumcised. Now notice this, the Jew was saying you have to be Circumcised, but they're saying now they believe in Abraham. Abraham was uh, the number one, the father of faith. They would tell the Jesus Christ that we're from the seed of Abraham and we have the law of Moses. And he's saying that, wait a minute, Abraham was considered righteous before he was circumcised. See, what, what did Abraham accomplish according to the flesh? Okay, let's go there. It, it, Jews, you're saying that you have to keep the law of Moses you're saying that you have to do these works according to the law of Moses in order to be saved. You're saying that a person has to be circumcised. What did Abraham receive? Well, remember, Abraham was declared righteous before he was circumcised. Now watch. But look, look, at, look at Romans chapter 10. Now, we're staying in Romans for a little bit. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Watch this. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. It says this, watch what he says here. Brethren, my heart desire and my prayer to God for them is for salvation. See that, brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for them is for their salvation. He's talking about the Jews here. For I testified about them that they, the Jews, have a zeal for God, but not according accordance with knowledge. For not knowing God's righteousness and seeing to establish their own, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. But notice what he says here. Notice verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. We're going to get into that. Moses writes that a man who practices righteousness, which is based on law, shall live by that righteousness. See? And so when you notice when he, he uses Abraham as an example to prove his point. Now, do you elevate Abraham? Abraham should be elevated. But he was considered righteous. He was considered innocent before the law existed. 
before he was circumcised. So what did those works do for him? Now, let's, let's go back to Romans 4. Romans, stay with me. Romans chapter 4. I'm going to move around just a little bit. Romans chapter 4. Watch this. So Abraham was considered righteous. Uh, God pronounced him innocent. Now watch. So God pronounced him innocent uh, before the law of Moses, before circumcision. He was pronounced innocent. So Abraham, notice Abraham was ungodly. Abraham was ungodly who was pronounced innocent. Now watch this. Now hear what I'm saying. Abraham was ungodly. And God, when he believed God, we're going to see what that is in a minute, that God said he's, God pronounced him innocent. He's no longer guilty. Now watch. But I'm going to show you that Abraham was also saved by the blood of Christ. Very interesting. I want to say it again. I'm going to show you that Abraham himself was saved by the blood of Christ. You say, well, how could that be? I'm going to show you. But notice how he was ungodly. Notice how he was ungodly and God pronounced him innocent. He considered his belief to, con to be righteous. In the God of I in, in eyes of God, he's righteous. That's righteousness because he believed in me. Watch. But so notice again, he's ungodly in Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. But to the one who does not work, what works he's talking about? Talking about what the Jews were saying. The Jews were saying that you had to keep the law of Moses. You had to be circumcised, et cetera, et cetera. You had to keep the Sabbath. Those are the works that you have to do to be saved. That's what he's talking about here. And even though Abraham was in a patriarchal dispensation, he's using it as an example. Abraham was considered righteous before these things. Matter of, fact, matter of fact, the law was not designed to save you. We study that. It was designed to identify sin. And so what are you talking about? And, and I like what he does. I'm going to go to your forefather, someone who you highly respect, and show you how he was considered righteous. But notice again, he was ungodly in verse 5 of chapter 4. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies, notice this, believes in him who justifies the ungodly. So God justifies the ungodly. His faith is credited as righteousness. So in order to be justified, we have to have the faith like Abraham had. See? Now, notice that Abraham was justified, and it said God justified the ungodly. Therefore, Abraham was ungodly. And God pronounced him innocent by his belief. Now, we get into belief. I'm going to show you that. I want you to think about it. It's, it's just Abraham just... 100% trusted in the word of God. He totally 100% trusted in the word of God. And we know that because he took action. And, and, and so what? And so notice that God justifies the ungodly. Look at Romans chapter 3, verse 10. We're right there. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. There is none righteous, not even one. Verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Chapter 4, verse 5. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. You see that? And, and, and so God, you're ungodly. There is, not, there is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned. That includes Abraham. And God justified him, pronounced him innocent because he believed in the word of God. Now, what does, now I'm going to show you something. Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you again. I just said it. I'm going to show you. I, I'll say it again. I'm going to show you that Abraham was saved by the blood of Christ. That sounds interesting, doesn't it? That sounds strange. Because I can't even count the years when Christ came later on. But you notice that we see that in the book of Luke, Abraham is in paradise. And he's on the patriarchal dispensation, the, the patriarchal law. And, and, and so, but watch this. Watch this. And so, I want you to turn with me, if you'd like. To Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. We're, that's easy. We're right, we're right here. Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. Watch this. As it is written, a father of many nations have I made you. He's talking about Abraham. In the presence of him whom he believed, and God who gives life to the dead, and call, watch this, and calls into being that which does not exist. So God can say that Abraham is righteous knowing that the blood of Christ is coming. Very interesting. 
So he can say you're saved knowing that the blood of Christ is coming. He can, say, he can talk about something that doesn't exist like it ought to exist. Like, I, 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 I'm, going to, you, I'm going to save you if you're obedient to me, then, then the judgment day will be wonderful for you. See? I, I, you're already saved. And, and so that's the power of God. God, it's like his word is that powerful. So watch this. Now, think about that. And I want you to go to 325. See, right here, Romans 325. But I, I like when I, the last part of that in 417, God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. So Abraham, you are innocent. You are righteous. Based on the blood of Christ is going to come and cover you. Now watch. In Romans 3.23, watch this. Whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood, that's Christ, through faith. Now what? Uh, watch that. Through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness. Watch this. Because in his forbear in the forbearance of God, see, in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. And so God can, it, it, it's like God held back the judgment. He held back the punishment. He allowed them to live. You're saved. Knowing that the blood of Christ is coming, knowing that the Messiah is coming, and he's going to do what he set out to do is going to happen. So you are saved. Now watch. And so I like that. Because of the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. What's that? Before the new covenant. That includes Abraham. Watch this. And so now take that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Let me get to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Watch this. Now think about what we just said. Now I want us to really understand this. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Someone, if you would, I'd like everyone to go there if you'd like. Watch this. I want you to look at it. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. For this reason, he, Christ, is a mediator of a new covenant that since a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant. Wow. Wow. So his blood was retroactive. It went all the way back to cover those during the time of the Mosaic system, during the time of the patriarchal system, those who are obedient to God. And God considered them righteous. I'm going to give you for your, for, I'm going to give you for these sins, knowing that the blood of my son will cover you. And that's what I, when I said in the beginning, you notice that the blood of Christ covered Abraham. And you, and you see that his blood, when he did, I like that. For this reason, he is a mediator, that's Christ, of a new covenant, so that since a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant. So God, you see, God was forbearance. He held back, knowing that the blood is going to cover all those who were ungodly. So the blood of Christ made them godly, and God said, that's righteous before the blood came because knowing that it's coming. So he can call something that does not exist, Romans 4, 17, like it already exists. Because he says in Isaiah 55, my word will not return to me void. So whatever I say is going to happen. And watch this. I want to show you something. So let's go back to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Watch this, Romans chapter 4. And, and well, let's get back into Abraham. So Abraham believed God. And if you go back to Genesis, Abraham was obedient to God. Now, what type of belief is there? Now, when, I, when, when you get into that belief that it's like he 100% trusted in God, and how did God know that Abraham trusted him? Because Abraham did what God required him to do. I think sometimes what people want you to do is they say, well, Abraham, uh, you know, you have to believe God. And it, because you believe, well, believe in what? And all they want you to do is think that all you have to do is that believe that Jesus Christ is God. That's it. Okay. Well, James chapter 2 says the demons believe and they tremble. 
But, and, and, and so, but it's very interesting that that's where people stop. Well, Abraham, well, if you do anything else, it's a work. No, Abraham did, and it, what his point is here, Jew. Listen, the Jew thought, I don't have to, listen, I, I have the law of Moses. Well, the only way you can keep the law of Moses is to keep it without breaking it. And Jew, you haven't done that. The only person that done that was Jesus Christ. That's the only, only way to be saved, to be justified by the law of Moses, is to keep it without breaking that one point. But they thought, well, we, could, well, we keep the Sabbath. So God owes me something. It's like, it's like I'm justified. We're, well, Jesus says something to them. Well, we're from the, the seed of Abraham, so I don't need, we, don't, we don't need forgiveness. We're from the seed of Abraham. What are you talking about? See? No, then if, if, if Jew, if you don't need, listen to this. Jew, if you can be saved based on the law, then what happens to the Gentiles? Because the law was given to the Jews. That means the Gentiles are not saved. See? And, and so, well, let me, let me, let's go here. I'm going to show you. Look at verse 20 of chapter 4. Watch this. Let me get out. I'm in Hebrews. Let's go to Romans chapter 4. Let me get out of Hebrews. Go back to Romans chapter 4. Look at verse 20. I feel like I'm in Bible class. I almost said anybody have any questions or comments. Romans chapter 4 and verse 20. Look at verse 19. But notice, I want to show you something before I get into this. Notice, the verse, notice verse 15. Uh, for the law brings about wrath. He's talking about the law of Moses. Where there is no law, there is no violation. For this reason, it is by faith, in order that it might be accordance with grace. See that? So that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, that's the Jew, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it's written, the father of many nations have I made you in the presence of him who, whom he believed. Even God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist, in hope against hope, he believed, in hope against hope he believed, so that he might become the father of many nations according to that which he had been spoken, so shall your descendants be. Watch this. Watch this. Look at this. Without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body, not now as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb, yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver at unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. Notice that he did not waver at unbelief. So when God said, you're going to have a child, even Sarah laughed because they were up in age. Doesn't make any sense. Abraham did not laugh, but you see that he believed God and he took actions because he did what married people are required to do by law. And they had a child. So right there you see that, it, watch this, but notice this. He, and, and when he was, so you see that he did something and God considered that you're righteous. What, what, what did he do? Well, God said you're going to have a child and they were of age. And, and, and again, Sarah laughed because it didn't make any sense. They were old. The Bible says it here. And but the fact that we know that Abraham believed God, and she did too, because they did what married people are required to do, and they had a child. See? So right there, I see that Abraham believed God entails obedience. But notice the belief here. Look at verse 20. I'm going to read that again. Yet without respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now look at John 14. Hold your spot there. Look at John 14, 12. John 14, 12. I'm going to go to John 14, 12. The reason why I'm not quoting these, because I can't, but I'm not, I don't have these already tagged because I want to turn there with you because I want us to look at these things. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. See? Now I got. I have to turn there, and so I, hopefully you will turn there with me. John 14, 12. Watch this. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, watch this, the works that I do, he will also do. See? And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. See that? Truly, I said to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, 
he will also do. So right there, belief entails doing something. Look at Titus. Let's go to Titus. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. I'm going to go there. I will go there with you. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. Watch. Watch this. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. This is a trustworthy statement. And concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God will be careful to engage in good deeds. See? These things are good and profitable for men. Wow. Notice what, notice what he said in verse 15. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. But now you see that. Look, so you read in the faith. And now read that verse again. So you got in the faith. Look at verse 8. This is a trustworthy statement. And concerning these things, I, may, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God will be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and profitable for men. What good deeds from where? The good deeds of those, the good deeds of the faith. Faith and belief, you're doing something. Well, okay. Well, let's go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. I'm going to go there. James chapter 2. Let's find James chapter 2. Here it is. James chapter 2. I'd like you to go there with me. James chapter 2. Look at verse 17. Watch this. Very interesting. So in Romans, Abraham is not justified by works. And we see what those works were. But in, in James, he's justified by works. See, there's a, that shows there's a distinction there. In James chapter 2, in verse 17, James 2 and verse 17, watch this. Even so, faith, if it's, watch this, Abraham had faith, right? Even so, faith, if, if, it, has no, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. Does it, faith entails works. But someone, say, someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. Abraham showed his faith and belief in God by the things that he did. That's common sense. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons believe and shudder. They tremble. They also believe there is a God. They don't do anything. He's saying there's more than just believing. There's more than just having faith. Show your faith in God by doing what he, what he requires you to do. See, he says, verse 20, but are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? What's, what's this? Well, what's this? What's this? Was not, a, watch this. Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works? But in Romans, he said he was not justified by works. See, was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, at the altar? So you, you see that faith was working with his works, and as a result of works, faith was perfected. And watch this. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, here we go again. Here we go again. And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So you see that a man is justified. Listen, so you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. So right there, you're justified by works. And that's what he wants a Jew to see. Abraham was justified by works. What works? He obeyed the voice of God. He 100% trusted in God. God tells him to sacrifice your son Isaac. And what does he do? He goes on his journey to sacrifice his son Isaac. You see? So let's go back to Romans chapter 4. And let's close out. And I want you to see this. And so as we deal with this, that's a sin. When people go to these passages. I want us to see that we have to keep it in context. So what is, so now watch this. We go back and read this. Verse 1 of chapter 4 Romans. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to flesh, 
has found. Well, Abraham was justified by works. That's the works that come from the law of Moses. The works that they say you have to do to be saved, like to keep the Sabbath, to also be circumcised. And he used Abraham as an example. He has something to boast about, but not before God. I mean, if he, he earned it. If you say we can keep the law of Moses and be saved, then you're earning it. It's not a gift. But what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited him as righteousness. Well, tied in at James chapter 2. We just looked at that. Now to the one who works, what, what, what we looked at that again. His wage is not credited as a favor, but it is what is due. And so in other words, if, if you're earning a salvation, Jew, then it's not, it's not a gift. It's not grace. I owe you something, and I don't owe you anything because the whole world is ungodly. And he says, but to the one who does not work, that's from this system that we talked about, the mosaic system. Even the patriarchal system didn't save them. It didn't save them. But believes in him. That's what, that's what God wants. But the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited to him as righteousness. And the belief does not just mean all I have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. And that's it. See, though he was son, yet he learned obedience, see, by the things that he suffered. Having been made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. And that's what he's saying. He wants us to see. It doesn't, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what we've done or how we've done it. If we make things right with God by obeying his new covenant, God is going to save us. And he wants the Jew and the Gentile to know that through my new covenant, by the blood of Jesus Christ, if you obey me, you follow my word, I will save you. You're not saving yourself. It's by the grace of God. I'm giving you what you don't deserve. You have become ungodly because you broke my law. But you can always come back to me. You can always obey me and follow my new covenant. It have, the blood of Christ has a strength. Think about it. It went way back to cover all those in the beginning of time. And it can cover us. It can cover the unsaved. All the person has to do is do what God requires him to do. And God will stand up to what he promised. That is salvation. If we can help you, please come. Every stand and sing a song. Meditation. If the neighbor is